What's this yeah. do? That is the actually battery shutoff switch. Okay. There's got two 12 volt batteries. Yeah. Uh, you need the 24 volts to spool it up to get started. Yeah. Um, and then there's a relay in there that cracks it back down to uh, um, 12 volts. It's got a pretty good operating. size trunk, you know. Yeah, it's it's operational, it's usable, and it's it's you know works for for what you need. And now we're sitting here in a really cool car, yes. a 1963, I believe you said. Yeah, it's a 1963 Chrysler turbine car. Yep. Uh, Chrysler was developing the turbine engine to see if there was an alternative to um, the internal combustion engine. And uh, how many of these were built? There's 50 of these built. Yep. Uh, there's nine of them left. Yep. Because of the high taxes on the imports, because the bodies were built by Ghia of Italy, yep. uh, we had to work on a deal with the government where we scrapped all but nine of them. And the rest were, except for three, Chrysler kept three, the rest were given to museums around the country. Um, and obviously it's a really cool car. Why didn't it succeed? What were some of the issues, technical issues? Well, it, it really wasn't as um, efficient as we wanted it to be. It was, it got the same kind of mileage the vehicle back in the day did. Uh, it got similar performance, it's about 135 horsepower. Uh, the problem is the cost of the manufacture of the engine was so high it wasn't practical. Uh, it actually cost, I understand, about $50,000 in 1963 dollars to make this engine. Wow, and that's not the body, that's just the no, power plant. No, that's just train. the power plant for one vehicle had been $50,000. So. Were any of them sold, actually? Did people buy them? No, none of them were sold to the public. Um, they were loaned out to the public, though. They gave families around the country, 230 families or so, a chance to drive these for three months at a time. So they, you know, they did the demographic research and the marketing research that we do now loan them out to the families and they just have to write a report once a month on what they thought of the car and typically everybody loved them and they attracted attention like they do now yeah because the sound is just phenomenal it yeah. sounds like a jet plane or a helicopter yeah you hear the turbine once and you're you know, remember that sound for life It is a handmade vehicle. It does have an aluminum hood and aluminum deck lid, um, but basically it's, it's to the standards of 1963. And what are we burning here? It's obviously not petroleum. No, uh, right now we're burning kerosene. Okay. Uh, one of the great things about this vehicle is you could burn anything combustible. Uh, leaded fuel, uh, unleaded, uh, diesel, jet fuel. Uh, we're, we run kerosene right now because it's easy to get and it's very clean and efficient. It doesn't smell great, but it's clean and efficient. Uh, back in the day, they actually, it was kind of a gimmick, ran them on alcohol. Yeah. And they also ran them on perfume. So, uh, just that was just the publicity stunt, but it worked. And tell me, how does it, how does the engine work? How is it different from an, obviously there's no pistons in it, right? Right, there's one spark plug. Yeah. Um, the engine actually runs at 1500 degrees. Okay. So it's much hotter running. Uh, it's very similar to a helicopter engine. Uh, similar in the, in the design and the, the theory that you've got air moving through the engine, uh, injecting fuel into it, combusting, spinning the flywheel. Um, that's why the temperature is so high. And that the um, impeller blades in there actually run at idle at 22,000 RPM. Wow. So it's really spinning in there. Uh, they had to actually build a very strong engine housing. Uh, they kept building them and building them, and once the parts stopped thro flying through the uh, housing, they knew that they had built one strong enough. And how does that translate to powering the car? Obviously, it's not like a jet engine where there's actually exhaust pushing the car forward, right? right? There's it, a regular transmission. It's a modified 727, typical tr three-speed transmission of the day. Basically, they took the torque converter off, okay. so it's more of a direct drive um, right to the transmission, right to the drive shaft, right to the rear wheel. So it, it's the same premise as an engine, as an internal combustion engine, um, as far as drivetrain goes, but the engine, how it spins up, is just different. And uh, how about how fast? It's the same speed? I mean, 125 horsepower, you said, right? 135-ish. Um, so it's gonna have a, a speed of 135 horsepower? Yeah, it's horsepower. a comparable vehicle to a 1963 Fury. The one difference you notice when you're driving, besides the sound, yeah. is what they call turbine lag. Okay. It's when you start off and give it some gas, there's a little bit of lag while the engine has to spool up and get turning. Uh, and that's 
maybe a second or two. Like turbo lag somewhat? Yeah, yeah. a little bit, similar yeah. to that. Um, once you're up and moving, there's really no difference besides the sound uh, to a 63 Chrysler. Uh, you know, we've only driven this 45, 50 miles an hour. We, of course, there's only a few of these left. There are no more engines left, so if we screw up the engine, That's it. we're done. <laughs> so we take very good care of it, and we, you know, you want to drive it fast, but, you know, not going to do that now. And what's your favorite part? You, you, you maintain a lot of old cars. What's your favorite part of this car? I just love the just the futuristic design for 1963. It's what everybody thought the flying car was going to look like. And the, the rear end looks like it, you know the Batmobile and has the do you think it's going to shoot flames out the back? It's just and the uh, the, the it's, it's a dummy through here, but the the drive shaft look through the uh, cockpit. Um, it's just that 1960s futuristic George, George Jetson Jetson's look. look yeah, yeah, exactly. So how do you start her up? All right, just put the normal key in. Yep. Uh, when it's the vehicle's cold, you have to wait for a brake light to go off on the dash. Okay. That's it's building up pressure in the engine, and you, so you just turn it on. The vehicle's already warm now, so that's not an issue. It's in park. Just turn the key, and it fires up. Now the interesting thing is the vehicle runs at 1,500 degrees and at 22,000 RPMs at idle. So the important part is the temperature. It's an air-cooled engine, so I have to watch the temperature all the time. Uh, if it gets up to any above 1,500 degrees, we'll shut it down. Uh, on cool days, we're usually around um, 35 or 1,350 or so. So right now it's running nice and cool, so we can run it up a little bit. Let me get the exhaust here. Where's the exhaust come out? Right in the back. If something does go wrong, we're not gonna get another um, engine. Yeah, 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 it's not gonna happen. So, and there's a lot of special metals and ceramics in the engine. So, there's really no rebuilding the engine. If it goes, it's a catastrophic failure. Wow, wow. Well, it sounds terrific. <coughs> And you said there's something special about the key. They all have the same key? Yeah, all the 50 <laughs> Turbine cars have identical keys, and that's because when we're sending uh, service representatives out in the field yeah. uh, to service the vehicles, because they were going all over the country and going to dealerships, that they could carry one key with them and service any vehicle. <laughs> that's great. Yes. So you can get them stolen easily, too. But <laughs> Well, that's the problem. That's why I don't walk far away from the car at any given time. Fuel, regular fuel gauge, Yep. regular temperature gauge. And all this is dummy in here, huh? <laughs> Everything works. Everything works. Wow. Everything works. Or worked when new. <laughs> cool. Thanks. Thank you. Oh, I love the way that sounds when it spills down. Yes. It's so cool. I just love it. Yeah, my name is Tom Peters. I'm director of design exterior for full size truck and performance vehicles. And, uh, you know, as Jeff mentioned, they said, why, why did you? Why did they put you in charge of truck and Corvette? Well, when you think about it, they're both high-performance vehicles. The customers are very passionate.